welcome back to elementary 72 gaming so today i'm actually doing something special about tower of god now obviously tog tower of god is one of the most phenomenal web games comics that anybody is reading at the moment and here's something which i've heard a lot of people say that most of the characters are only surviving due to plot convenience now yes it is really plot convenient to keep them alive but let's think about a real life story in the same place we have a world war ii veteran story about how he miraculously survived with his entire platoon through a bombardment which kills 150,000 people and just 50 people randomly survive uh, him and his closest friends make it all the way to the end and are the best of friends when they reach the end point we don't count that as plot convenience or plot armor we consider that the story now that is something that we have to separate from our big ideals of these shows you can have a crazy story the story can be a person surviving odds that are insurmountable surviving uh, a fight against somebody who should instantly kill him a, a three-year-old killing an adult in a random situation i'm just saying hypothetically which is basically bomb fighting all the high rankers and stuff is it possible that these rare things can happen once in a while and sometimes the person's life is so fortunate that it's just rare occurrence upon rare occurrence they get stronger and stronger with time they have a more firm aspect inside themselves and they keep growing on those points so we have to think about the storytelling as a single line story if something doesn't make sense and if something is too convenient it has to follow something which is absurd like um, if you have a war where there are absolutely no casualties and everybody who enters the war survives that is a extreme plot convenience when i'm talking about that i'm actually talking about um, fairy tales they have three major wars with alliances who are supposed to be so strong they could wipe them out anytime they wanted which is why they have to form alliances to fight them and in the end they just end up beating them all on their own their their main force ends up being so powerful they can just overcome them i know i'm drawing on another type of series altogether to compare to tower of god which is something i have to now that is total plot convenience however in tower of god people die people die all the time we have season one uh the opening scenes of people are dying left right and center when you enter the first ground on floor two uh during the tests people are dying we, we may not notice it but one or two people do die one or two people are retired injured because they aren't killed during this the, the other tests on the floor um then let's see we're moving forward a little bit there's the fish hunt basically we told that bomb is dead over there and people believe it because it's realistic that people die in the test they go up the a, a few floors you see the team is a lot has been reshuffled a lot we don't know whether those members are still alive or if they dead and there is the convenience of the story it's following a good plot we enter into season two and bomb literally kills two guys entering as jovial grace bomb is really serious he fights really hard he does a lot in that first few opening uh, scenes now you may say that nobody dies in the first uh, part of season two which you are correct or no no sorry you're wrong um wagnan's friend i'm forgetting his name uh the cutie i'm not forgetting it uh anyway uh yeah the lurker kills uh kills her kills him sorry and there is a whole plot point there, there's a killing in the first sister uh so many people die in that test they kill the parasite they kill other members on the floor there's, there's so many things that are falling through in that little situation um kun's team ends up suffering uh, losses immediately after that as they climbing floors um sorry about this i'm a little bit lost on words for some of these we move on past the the next floor we we start moving up towards the workshop battle regulars die in the workshop battle right don't think that that hasn't happened uh 
Baragraf killed someone in his opening fight in that uh, tournament. People were shot and killed to get onto the Archimedes. And all of this is happening all around. So death is very common in Tower of God. The, the survivability of the heroes may seem really huge in comparison to everybody else, but it is the lucky few who always survive. Their luck will be phenomenal. Dan, who is part of the main cast, is literally from the opposite side of the luck. He was in a team where everybody literally got wiped out twice or thrice, and he is there. Wagner is from the same type of situation. All of his friends got wiped out, and he is just continuing on up the tower. Um, he lost Prince, he lost Archrafter. So did Bob, right? And we don't see that there, we don't feel that when we're going through it. We see the Hell Train entrance. Um, people are dying in the station, people die uh, getting onto the train. All of this happens and we don't think about it. We learn that people have died for the plot to reach where it is. But it doesn't hit home to us because it's not those, those who we are following. And remember, it's their story that we're listening to, so things are a lot more different. What Rachel has been doing and the murder she's, she, she, she starts committing inside the hell train and all of those crazy things is a whole other aspect altogether. Bam killing the souls of those on the floor of death, his home. We don't consider that him killing people as yet. Then he finally reaches the next set where he's at the station and things are massively um, against him. There's a massive amount of death that occurs on that station. They kill the staff who are willing to help those on the train. We don't consider that as part of the plot. Well, they're practically part of the same team. It's just that they are the unlucky few who joined in and got wiped out right in the start. Their stories were that short. And a lot of people were complaining that there is plot convenience. It is a plot convenience, yes. But it does make sense for the story. The lucky few survive a lot. Kun, Kun is no lucky survivor. He's a literal betrayer who's getting lucky all of a sudden. He survived a chance of death, right? He got more powerful all of a sudden afterwards and he's only growing in strength. Rock, on the other hand, same story. He almost died, he survived by a nick of luck. We knew that someone was following them and looking out for them all this time, but we, we thought they'd interfere earlier. Meanwhile, they only interfered to save the three who fell and they only saved two. We thought Drak was dead. Obviously, he got transferred over because it wasn't part of plot convenience. It's part of the story. The story had an intensity that was needed for us to understand where things were going. It was there for a purpose. We move on a little bit forward. We reach the cage arc. Ba makes a new friend. His name is Deng Deng. He dies. Right? Straight up dead. Deng Deng dies. One of the massive things. They go, they fight near the wall, a whole lot of the canine people die. It's Bam's decision. Bam has made bad decisions. He's, he's cost people their lives. He takes on the, the nest to go and save his teacher. A lot of people die. He faces the reality that he is no innocent person. He's as guilty as the rest of them. He's facing the facts. He's growing with the story. He realizes his luck is unbelievable. He takes on White. He fights White. He, he disregards all the little fancy titles he keeps on himself, all the little pieces of himself that he wants to hold on to. He disregards it for the sake of uh, doing what is truly right in that moment. And that is why he survived the fight with White. And oh, oh, that's the reason why he's winning the fight with White. We never know, the last piece is coming up. But that is the reality behind the story. There is so much for you to see when it comes to the tower. And if you believe that everything is just a plot convenience upon plot convenience, you're lying to yourself, you're lying to, you're lying to the vast majority of people who watch the show that it is a plot convenience because it definitely is not a plot convenience. Bomb survival is luck in its highest degree. If you don't believe me, think about it this way, right? When we hear about um, Winston Churchill and all these famous heroes, they pull off feats that are unbelievable to make it to the end. Okay, wait, someone better, William Wallace. He literally faces off against armies where they didn't stand a chance, and he rises all the way to pull a, an entire country to a point where they almost quit. Was that a plot convenience of reality? No, it wasn't. That was the story that he went through. It was his luck. And here we are being told of the luck of this small number of people who are most probably going to have the most unlucky ending. 
Take a check on Titan. The fact that that group from um, the scouts survived, just those few individuals who we focus on, it's not plot convenience. It's because it is their story. We're going to get their story until they disappear. And then obviously we know what's about to happen for all those who've read the manga. And yeah, that's, that's the sad part of the story. And we see that all that plot convenience we believe to be plot convenience was merely um, a foreboding for the bad luck catching up to certain individuals. And that's the reality of the situation. You have to understand that a story can look very, very fortunate for some people, while it really is very unfortunate. Imagine if we come to the end and we find out that Kun has to kill Bam in the end, the best, his best friend in the entire world, the person he cherishes the most. He has to literally kill Bam to save the tower, or he has to kill Bam so that they can keep climbing because Bam absorbs all of the 13 month series and they need it and Bam really needs to get out of the tower because if Bam doesn't he's going to become an uncontrollable monster so Kun has to do it in the end Lord Rachel has to kill him and we find out that things go topsy-turvy we, we don't know what the end holds for us exactly we may have some ideas we may have some inkling of what's going to go down towards the end but that's the reality of it we don't know if he's a monster we don't know if he's a good guy we don't know if this is fortunate or unfortunate and you have to keep that in mind when you think about the tower. So catch you all in the next Tower of God video. Until then, 